Hi guys, welcome to another video by Antiques Arena. My name is Walter O'Neill and this is going to be a chat about guilt. I know, I know exactly how it sounds. Um, basically, I've had a few people comment on how cheap I buy stuff and they've said, oh my God, how can you live with yourself? You know, I'm robbing people. Now, I'm going to start off at my venue of car boot sales. As you know, I go to car boot sales regular and I buy stuff for next to nothing and sell it on. Um, now, the thing with car boot sales is they are not dealers. They don't know what they're selling. Um, so should I go up to the stall and say, oh, well, I want this. Really, you're asking a pound, but it's worth 50. I'll give you 20. Well, who in their right mind is going to do that, first of all? Now, more often than not, right, you'll walk around car boot sales and you'll hear, oh, it's this price on eBay. Oh, it's this price on eBay. They'll be asking all the money. Now, what they don't realise, those people, is you've got to sell it on eBay. You've got the hassle of selling it on eBay. You've got the hassle of all their hard work customers. You've got the commissions to pay, the packing to do. You've got to compete with everyone else. It isn't easy. Um, when you go to the car boot sales, they price it up themselves. More often than not, I hear all the time people saying, Do you know, if I can't sell a year, everything that's gone left is going in the box and going to the charity shop. So they don't want it anyway. Um, and they put on the, the price they're happy with that they feel it's worth. Do I feel guilty for buying it at the asking price? No, but what I do is, let's say for argument's sake, I know I'm going to get 50 quid, 100 pound or something for an item and then asking 10 or 20 quid. I don't knock them down. I pay the full asking price. If they're asking two or three quid and I can get hundred pound, I'll still pay this full asking price of two or three quid. The only time I'll knock someone down is if I think it's a bit close. If they're asking a ten and I think I'm gonna get twenty, but I could end up with fifteen, I might knock them down a couple of quid just in case. Because I always like the safety net of if you can't sell it, you can always out it to trade, and I like to get my money back with trade. So if it's a bit close, then I will knock them. But very rare, I knock on a car boot sale. I normally pay the full asking price. So do I feel guilty over that? No, not really, not at all. Most of the stuff on car boot sale has been given to them by family, given to them by friends. It's stuff they don't want, and as I said, you'll go to charity shops afterwards. Then when you talk about charity shops, because I do buy out of charity shops. I don't buy out of this one here because it's too close to home. But I do buy out of charity shops. Now, should I be guilty because I'll buy something out of a charity shop for a five or a ten and sell it for 30 or 40 quid? Well, no. Because charity shops have people that go in and value their items. And they've been doing this a long time now and they probably know how to sell better than anybody big business in charity shops they have the stuff for free so it doesn't cost them nothing um, all the money goes to good causes um, and if I buy something off them let's say they're selling a decanter for a tenner and I can get 40 quid for it and I pay them their 10 pounds they've got that 10 pound there and then right there that 10 pounds already going off to a good cause to somebody who you know needs it and that 10 pound is 100% 10 pound for them um, for their charity whereas me it may take me six months to sell that decanter but at the same time the charity shop are valuing items at the value they feel their customers will pay they may not have the same customers customers as me they may not have the same look on something as me antiques is very much about opinions um, my opinion on something may differ from their antique expert opinion so, you know, they price it up for what they feel they feel is worth in their shop. If I can do more money on it in my shop, then why shouldn't I buy from the charity shop and offer it to my customers at a higher price? Now, I've obviously got overheads, bills, rates and everything else i got to pay. So I have to make a profit as well, but I'm not going to turn around in the charity shop and say, oh, well, I think I can get 40 quid for it or 30 quid for it. So I'll up my, my offer to you because if I can't get it and I am wrong, then I can always out it. And if I do get it, then great. I got bills I got to pay and I got to make a wage. But 
I don't feel guilty because that ten pound I may have spent theoretically has gone to a good cause. They freed up space on their shelf for the next piece to come in from the back room or from upstairs to sell to the next customer. They need turnover as much as we need turnover. Um, so no. Um, then we're looking at pieces that come over the door, because that's my next uh, big area where I buy from. Now I'm going to refer to one of my recent buys is a train set. Now I paid two hundred pound for a train set. In my opinion, it's still worth four five hundred pound. Um, others have said it's worth as much as a thousand, but I don't. I don't feel it's up there. But it would be if I was to split it up, take two or three years and sell every single piece at the maximum value. Now I don't work like that. What I do is I find an average price and I sell. I may sell to trade, I may sell to retail, but um, with the, the case of the train set, I'll sell it all in one go. Um, to me, I gave 200 pound. I told them there and then, I said it's probably worth 400 plus. But I said, I've got to sell it. I've got to market it. I've got to pack it. I've got to ship it. I've got to pay commission on my sales. If I sell it for 500, I'm losing 60, 70 quid to eBay straight away. Another 30, 40 quid to PayPal is 100 pound gone in costs. That's what people don't see. So there's 100 pound gone in costs to sell it for 500, which then leaves me 400. I've laid out that 200 at the beginning. I may have it for six months, I may have it for a week. But I don't know when my money's coming in. And if I can't sell it, then I gotta then think, well, how do I get my money back? Now, at the same time, you have to look at, when I looked online, half the carriages weren't worth what I thought they would be, um, and a few other bits were worth more, so it balanced out. But what about when people come over the door with something, and I say, yeah, I think it's worth 40 quid, I'll give you 15 or 20 quid, and when I look on eBay, they're selling for a tenner. Do I then say, oi, come back, I want my money back? No, it's, it's my mistake. Um, that's the gamble I take. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Um, believe it or not, more often than not, with eBay and the internet and that these days, people research what they got before they come in. They really do. They have an idea what it's selling for before they come in, because they really do. They just say, oh, but I can get this and this online, and I'm thinking, go online then. Have the hassle, pay the fees. It isn't that easy. Um, especially if someone comes in with a collection of silver, like come in last week. Someone came in with a collection of silver, and I offered him £170. Pound. He saw it at three to £400 worth. But by the time, as I've said, i got to pay the fees, i got to pay the listings, i got to pay the, you know, PayPal, I then got to spend the time, the hours, photographing it, putting it up for sale, waiting for it to sell. When it sells, spend the time packing and shipping. And I take the risk then of getting lost or damaged between shipping and I take the loss. So am I um, greedy offering half of what I feel something's worth? No. Um, some people offer a lot less. Now, the amount of people that come in the shop and they say, well, what about this? Let's say for argument's sake, they'll come in with a gold ring. And I'll put it on my scales and I'll give them a price. Let's say, I'll say 10 gram ring and I'll say, oh, I'll give you 75 quid or 80 pound. And they think, mm, that's not very much is there. And they go away and they go to Cash Converter or one of these others up here, because they do. And they end up coming back to me two, three, four days later and say, can I have that offer actually? So the amount of people that come back to me, um, is really quite high. Now I have had some really good deals. I paid a hundred pound for a um, collection of Nazi memorabilia. I didn't want to sell her in the shop, so I outdid a trade. Um, I done extremely well off it. However, you could have gone the other way. You can't sell it on eBay because of the swash stickers and things. I don't want it in my shop. The only other place would have been the car boot sale. And there was more in it than I thought. But it could have gone the other way. It could have all been reproductions. It could have been nobody wants the stuff. Um, then I would have been stuck with it and that it would have been my loss. Would they give me my £100 back then? No, they wouldn't. It's the same now. If I can't sell this train set, would they give me the £200 back? No, they wouldn't. If they're happy, they've got their money, they move on. Um, so yeah, I do pay cheap for the items. I tend to cover my own arse. 
uh, the way I buy is I look at it and I think, well, what could I sell that to a dealer for? Well, what do what would some of my dealer friends pay for that? And I still undercut that then. So even if I have to sell to a dealer, I still make a couple of quid profit on there. And that's how I tend to work. But do I feel guilty for it? No. Uh, do you know, I had to walk around car boot sales, going back to the car boot sales, and I had to go in jewellery boxes. Uh, people are, have got boxes on the table with jewellery, and they say, oh, everything is a pound. And the amount of times women go, there's no gold in there. And I had to think, well, I'm looking for costume jewellery, I'm looking for silver, I'm looking for coins, I'm looking for this. You don't know what I'm looking for. Stop shouting at me. It's not just gold. But more often than not, I will pull gold out of that box for a pound. They just don't like the fact a man's going through their jewellery. They want it to go to women. Um, but if they're pricing it up, then that's their problem. And they always scowl at me when I come out with a handful of stuff for a pound a piece. And I go, there you go, there's six items, there's your six pound, thank you very much. And I walk away smiling and they're scowling the rest of the day thinking, basket was he bought. <laughs> but no, I don't feel guilty for buying cheap and selling, selling on, guys. That is the job we're in. Um, do I feel it's our place to tell people what it's worth? No. Uh, you can't be a buyer and a seller. I do try and play fair with people. I have people come in the shop and I don't always know the prices. So what I'll do, I'll pull up the average eBay prices. Um, someone came in this week with um, a camera. And um, it was a German camera. And when I looked online, yeah, some people were asking 150 quid for them. But I clicked on, I went to the sold prices, and it was one sold for 29, one sold for 34, one sold for 44. So I said to him, it's worth 20 pounds to me, double my money. He took it. Irrelevant what other people were asking, I turned the camera around, uh, computer around, I showed him, I said, look, some are selling for 44 pounds. But to me, it's 20 quid. I said, I got fees to pay and everything else. I said, that's my offer. You are welcome to go and put it online yourself and try and get the 40, 50 quid yourself. But here's 20 quid, you've got the cash, the item's gone, you can forget about it, you can go and spend that money. So we earn our profits, they don't uh, come in for nothing. It's a lot of hard work. So I don't feel guilty no matter where I buy, guys. I don't feel guilty if I buy out of charity shops, I don't feel guilty if I buy off people who come over the door. Um, don't get me wrong, I've had people come in here, oh, I'll buy a ring off me, I want to go and get a joint, and I'll say, no, I'm not interested in my thanks, and I'll send them away, I don't want to know. You know, I'm particular who I buy off, I'm particular what I buy. Because um, I've even had people outside mourning, who oh, he's fussy and any, who does he think he is and this and that. I'm very particular, I have to be able to sell it on. <coughs> but don't ever let anybody say, oh, you're robbing people and this and that. You can make an offer, they don't have to accept it. You offer what you feel is a fair price. Sometimes it's gonna go that you've paid too little and you're gonna make a lovely profit. And other times you're gonna be, oh, I overpaid for that. Shouldn't have paid that for it. It swings and roundabouts. It balances out at the end of the year, but don't ever, ever feel guilty about buying. Do you know, I was um, belittled at the car boot sale back a few years ago to the point I almost stopped going to the car boot sales because people were taking the piss out of me saying, He's going around and he's picking it up for a couple of quid and he's selling it for 50 quid and 100 quid and he's ripping people off and I felt terrible. I almost felt embarrassed to go in jewellery boxes and that, thinking people were thinking about me and talking about me. And you know, it got to the point I thought, do you know what, bugger them all. If they put it out on that table for sale and they got a price, that's their problem, guys. Don't ever feel that you shouldn't just buy it at the price. Um, I'm going to use... Um, a follower as an example I watched her video Lex I watched her video the other week and she went to Bridgen car boot sale and the woman says Lex goes through the jewelry box and she goes like that Lex does with a handful of stuff and the woman had her engagement ring and her wedding band in that group as well I said oh that's my engagement ring and my wedding ring that is I'm trying to fund my divorce ah uh, seven quid for it all or something like that it was it was something stupid she knew what she was selling she knew they were gold she didn't want them should Lex have turned around and said oh well that's worth 40 quid that's worth 30, 40 quid how about I give you 20 quid of course not the woman set her own price that's up to the seller so don't ever feel guilty guys and don't let people make you think that you're in the wrong because you bought something cheap because it may be cheap but how long are you going to be stuck with it how long till you get your profits when you buy in, buy at a price that you know 
If you can't sell it, you can move it to someone else, trade, and get your money back. You don't want to be taking losses. Anyway, guys, I'm going to leave it there. Hopefully, you've enjoyed uh, my little uh, chat on guilt. <laughs> um, I certainly don't feel guilty anymore. The reason I don't buy out the charity shop here isn't through guilt. It is because it's too close to home, as in I don't want to offend people. I'll buy out to the other charity shops, and they do bring stuff to me that they can't sell. But I won't go in there every day because in all honesty I could buy off this shop, put it in here and treble the price. I really could. But I don't do it because I don't want to offend them. Um, they can't get the prices I can get. People come into an antique shop and they look around and they know antiques are going to be expensive. They go into a charity shop, they expect it for 50p. So the charity shop can't achieve the same price as me. Um, that's why I won't go in there purely because I'm friendly with them and I don't want to upset them. So, yeah. But that's the only reason. It's not through guilt. Anyway, guys, I'm leaving it there. I could rub it on all day about this. Um, loads of examples if I wanted to, but I won't. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. If you have, I would appreciate a like and a share. Do you know what? I know there's a lot of you who are dealers. Leave any comments if you've had any uh, hassle with uh, a buyer saying, coming on to you uh, morning because you've bought something off them and sold them for profit. You know, I'd like to hear your, uh, your experiences too. Guys, thanks for watching. Um, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe, leave a comment, let me know if you've subscribed, I'll give you a thumbs up. There's a little bell as well for notifications. You'll find me on Facebook, I have a page and a group, Antiques Arena. You'll find me on eBay, Antiques Arena Clearance. Add the word clearance at the end, guys. Um, I got my own website, antiquesarena.co.uk and antiquesarena.com. Or you can come and see me in the shop, it's Antiques Arena. You guessed it. <laughs> 78 Oxford Street, Mountain Ash, Charlie Fox, Strat 45, 3 Hotel Bravo. Thanks for watching, guys. Ah, bye for now.